Hello, I'm James Clark from King's College London, and in this short video I'm going to show you how to carry out a chi-squared test and a Fisher's exact test for contingency data. A chi-squared test or Fisher's exact test should be used when comparing data from two or more groups when the outcome is a categorical variable, such as the presence or absence of disease. In order to enter data into GraphPad Prism to enable you to do these tests, you need to make a contingency table. In order to create a contingency table, from the File menu, choose New Data Table in Graph or New Project File, and choose Contingency from the choice of eight tables and graphs on the left-hand side. You can start with importing your own data or use one of the tutorials. Since we already have data entered into Prism, I'll press Cancel. In order to carry out these tests for this demonstration, We've entered data into two contingency tables. The first, shown on the screen, lists the number of cases of myocardial infarction, or MI, in subjects that have either smoked or not smoked. It is a 2x2 two two table showing the MI cases and the control cases in those who have smoked or never smoked. For the chi-square test, we've entered a large data set from a study looking at the skin reaction in the arm and the face from using skin cream. You can see here the numbers are much higher, upwards of 15,000 patients, and we have shown arm and face in rows with no reaction and severe reaction in columns. We are now going to use these data to undertake a chi-squared test. It's important to remember what your null hypothesis is for undertaking this test. The null hypothesis is that the relative proportions of one variable are independent of the second variable. So in our case, so in our example here, our null hypothesis states that there is a similar degree of reaction in arm and face in response to use of this cream. In order to carry out a chi-squared test on these data, in the analysis toolbar you can click on the chi-squared icon or choose analyze chi-squared and Fisher's exact test from the contingency table analysis and then select your data set. Once you've selected this you can press on OK and PRISM will bring up the options window for this test. Your choice of which effect sizes to report will depend upon your experimental design but for the moment under method to compute the p-value I'm going to carry out a chi-squared test. In the options box we can choose between a one-sided or two-sided calculation. We would always recommend you use a two-sided calculation. And below this, you can choose how your p-values are outputted. Once you're happy with your selection, click on OK. What will now be reported is the outcome of our chi-squared test. Looking on the results page, we can see here we have a p-value of 0 0.0001 or less. This means we can reject our null hypothesis and we can conclude from these data that in the case of our skin irritation there is a higher proportion of skin irritation on one part of skin than the other. If we look down at our data set underneath our p-value we can see the ratios of arm versus face when comparing no reaction to severe reaction and you'll see that there is far more severe reaction in the face than the arm. So that's a chi-squared test, a simple way of comparing a 2 by 2 table to see whether your null hypothesis is supported. So let's move on to the Fisher's exact test and our data set. In this table we have our data we presented previously and to undertake a Fisher's exact test we select the table click on Analyze, choose Chi-squared and Fisher's exact test from the list of contingency table analyses and select your two data sets. These will be selected by default. Click on OK. This time, from the method to compute the p-value option box, we choose Fisher's exact test. On this parameters options page, we can also choose the effect sizes we wish to report and we have four options here. We have relative risk, difference between proportions, odds ratio, and sensitivity, specificity, and predictive values. 
In the example we're presenting here, we really want to know the odds ratio. So we can click on odds ratio. On the options page, you can instruct Prism how it calculates the odds ratio. By clicking on the drop down list, you can choose between two different analyses. The Wolf Logit version, which was previously used by Prism version 6 and earlier, or the Baptista Pike method. We would always recommend you use the recommended analysis tool. As before, on this page you can choose between a one-sided or two-sided analysis, and we'd always recommend you leave it on two-sided, unless you have information about the expected outcome. Once you are happy with your selections, we click on OK. Just like with chi-squared tests, we are presented with our p-value, which in this case is 0.0001 or less, showing a high likelihood that our null hypothesis can be rejected. The results window reminds you of the method you use to calculate your odds ratio, and above this are the odds ratios listed. In this example, PRISM is showing the odds ratio of 4.757 with a confidence interval of 2.85 up to 7.93, assuming 95% confidence intervals. This means you have a 4.75 times likelihood of having an MI as a smoker as you would if you were a non-smoker using this example dataset. For your convenience, PRISM also puts on this screen the reciprocal of your odds ratio. In other words, the likelihood of the opposite happening. In this case, it's 21%. Underneath your odds ratio report, you can see a series of tables which look at percentage of rows, percentage of columns, and percentage of grand totals, attributing proportions to each of your outcomes. Of course, it is rather convenient that the outcome of both of these tests was strongly positive. If we were to edit our table and change the data, we can then look and see what a negative outcome looks like. So in this case, we're going to change the numbers to much higher numbers for the never smoked category, and therefore we will probably show that there is no longer a difference. PRISM will automatically recalculate the analysis in the background if you change the data on your table, so there is no need to rerun the analysis. We merely need to go back to the results table and we'll now see the outcome of the Fisher's exact test with the new data set. This time you can see the p-value is 0.9024, close to 1, therefore it is not significant. The odds ratio is around 1, showing you are just as likely in our new data set to get an MI if you do smoke as if you don't smoke. Be sure to use the example data provided with GraphPad Prism in order to further understand the use of these analysis tools.